Yeah, so definitely go check out that book in Port the Ice Roll. It's very cool. All right, our next speaker is Megan Sheehan. She is coming to us all the way from Chicago, Illinois. She's a business analyst and trainer at Technology Advisors. She's our second Sugar Scholar, so we're very excited to have her here. And Megan has written not one, not two, but three books about sugar serum. So she knows what she's talking about. Listen up. My name is Megan Sheehan, and I'm going to be sharing some tips and tricks for working with Sugar Cloud, formerly known as Sugar On Demand. I work for technology advisors, like Lauren just said, and a lead implementation partner with Sugar. Over 70% of our customers are hosted in Sugar Cloud, so this is something that I'm working with on a daily basis in multiple instances. Depending on your perspective, when you think about Sugar Cloud, you might picture a happy sunny day, or maybe some store clouds. Hopefully this presentation helps you move into the first group and think of the happy sunny cloud. So jumping right into my first tip, take advantage of the sandbox capabilities that Sugar offers. If you're using Sugar's Enterprise or Ultimate Editions, you're entitled to at least two cloud sandboxes, and you should definitely be taking advantage of those. The first thing everyone probably thinks about here is upgrades. And of course, you should be testing upgrades in a sandbox before operating production to make sure you're not going to run into any issues. It's a good idea to establish a procedure for testing upgrades, especially now that Sugar Cloud receives four upgrades per year. You can even sign up to have Sugar automatically upgrade your sandbox as soon as a new release is available so that you can start testing right away. Even outside of upgrades, sandboxes should be used to test significant changes. Whether that's making a bunch of studio configurations or deploying a code bundle, testing in a sandbox allows you to make sure everything will run smoothly before deploying to production instead of gambling that it will work. I should also add that it's important to test code customizations in a Sugar Cloud instance, not just locally, because you never know when environmental changes are going to make a difference to how the code is executed. If I had a dollar for every time someone told me, well, it works fine locally, let's just say I could have some fun here in Vegas. <laughs> Moving on from sandboxes, next I'd like to talk about some things that are built into Sugar to help you work around the fact that you don't have direct server level access when working with Sugar Cloud. One of these is the diagnostic tool, which is accessible from the administration page. The diagnostic tool allows you to access server-level data, such as the config file, custom directory, PHP info file, table schema, sugar log, and more, all of which can provide you a lot of helpful information about a sugar cloud instance. Also, if you're using Enterprise Edition or higher, you can use advanced reports functionality to write and run SQL select statements so that you can query the database. I found that to be really helpful when I need access to some of the backend tables, like schedulers or advanced workflow tables, when I'm testing and troubleshooting something. For scenarios where you need additional help or you need to make changes to the database, the configuration files, the next tool in your toolkit is Sugar Support. Through a support portal, you can work with Sugar's awesome support team to handle these requests. To run through a few cloud-related examples, you can ask for a sandbox to be refreshed or request a backup of an instance to restore locally for developer. You can work with Sugar Support to undelete data that someone accidentally deleted and wants restored. Or you can work with Sugar Support to run a set of SQL queries against the database to update data or truncate tables. You can even work with Sugar Support to adjust configuration settings such as log levels when you're troubleshooting various issues. Finally, my last set of advice is about resources for keeping up with news about Sugar CRM and Sugar Cloud in particular. Although it's pretty rare, you definitely want to know right away if something's happening server-side that might cause your instance to be slow or down. You can access this information at status.sugarcrm.com or in the Sugar Cloud space on Sugar Community. Sugar Community is an absolutely amazing resource, so if you're not on there, definitely check it out. And you can even set up a user account and follow the Sugar Cloud space so that you receive automated emails right away if there are any posts about server issues or server maintenance. Speaking of Sugar Community, I'd also recommend following the releases space so that you're notified of new releases. Take the time to read the wonderful release notes, including the technical section if you're a developer, which you hopefully you are, so that you know what to expect during the upgrade process. That applies not just to Sugar releases, but also releases for the Outlook plugin, Mobile, Hint, and so on. You also want to make sure you know when releases, when instances are being upgraded or server maintenance is scheduled. System administrators are notified by default, 
but other email addresses can be subscribed through the admin notification settings tool. Partners, take note, that's a great way for you to stay informed about your customers' upgrades. Finally, pay attention to emails and community posts about webinars and other events. Make sure that you're taking advantage of the webinars, developer blog, and many other resources that Sugar offers to help you learn more about the product and what's coming next. Thanks so much. My contact information is here, or feel free to find me here at SugarCon.